Today, for the very first time ever, we're on the Unpopular Opinion subreddit. I'm so excited for this. I'm sure we're going to read some absolutely wild stuff today, as we do every single day. And yeah, guys, thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful time. Water milk is the most refreshing drink there is. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a name other people call it, but it's when you pour yourself a glass of milk, drink it, and then immediately refill the cup with cold water without washing out the milk residue. So it has all of those delicious milk particles floating around in it. Tasty as a glass of milk and refreshing as a glass of water. The best drink there is. Yeah, okay. Saying that it's the best drink there is. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a little bit extreme, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it's... It's definitely an unpopular opinion. Like, I'm sure it's not bad, but is it the best drink ever? Is it even a drink, you know? It's a mistake, maybe. We're off to a strong start. When people marry, whoever's last name sounds cooler should be the one that's camped. Gender shouldn't have any bearing whatsoever on who takes whose last name. Instead, couples should take whoever's last name sounds cooler. It's fair, it makes more sense. And everyone will have better sounding names in the end. If they both sound equally good, then they can rock, paper, scissors, or hyphenate or something. I Okay, this one I'm definitely on board with. Like, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Stay-at-home spouses who complain that their partner doesn't help enough are typically full of crap. My wife and I have been together for about 15 years with three kids. I've been the sole provider for most of this with her staying home. But for a period of time, about two and a half years, I was the stay-at-home spouse. It was the best time of my life. I was very self-conscious about being a stay-at-home dad, so I went above and beyond to take care of the home and the kids. It took about two or three hours per day for the first few weeks. Then just maintaining what I had done was about two hours a day. I got to spend more time with my kids. It was great. My wife was putting in 10 to 12 hours each day, getting ready, commuting and working. You bet your sweet ass I made sure she didn't have to lift a finger when she got home. If she did anything to help, it was because she genuinely wanted to. I'm not talking about spouses who are slobs or just aren't engaging with their kids or partner. Certainly, those are issues to be talked about. But complaining that they never do the dishes, I would never expect them to. Edit, so apparently a lot of people have a chip on their shoulder about who does more work in a relationship and everyone has qualifiers and extreme examples that may or may not invalidate my post. You need to be communicating with your spouse, not me. This is vital for a healthy relationship. Work out a compromise and if you can't, I'm sorry for what may come next. Some of this is always easy. There are good days and bad days. Yeah, obviously this is completely dependent on the circumstance. Yeah, like these comments say, I think the in-between here is the base level. If you're in a relationship where one works and one stays at home, the one putting in 10 to 12 hour days, including travel, probably shouldn't be expected to do that much when they come home in the realm of household duties, but they should still be a functioning human and take care of necessary things that they need to when they get home. Any other take is not even an opinion, it's just wrong. And this take is literally just act like an adult and communicate like an adult. I know not everyone has the same skills, but cleaning up after yourself is something a freaking child could do. Yeah, obviously there's a line with stuff like this. This subreddit's so awesome. The most comfortable clothing to sleep in is stiff jeans. My favorite thing to do after a long day is to just take a shower, dry off and put on a crisp pair of stiff jeans to go sleep in. I love the way they feel. Kind of like a weighted blanket. Nah, I'm sorry. I don't see this. <laughs> like I understand if you're really exhausted and you're already wearing jeans and you go lay down or something. But if you're not wearing jeans already and you go and put jeans on just to sleep in. Nah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever done this and also trying to think if it would be comfortable. I feel like it wouldn't. And even if it was sort of comfortable, to say it's the most comfortable thing to sleep in, no way, definitely not. I always eat dessert before dinner at a restaurant. When at a restaurant, waiting staff always find it weird when I order dessert before the appetizer and the main course. They ask, oh, is that all you're having? I'm like, no, I just want my cheesecake first, please. I have to convince them that I'm just a dessert first kind of guy. I feel like the main course is much more enjoyable when you're dopamine levels are boosted. Wow, interesting. I wonder if there's anything to this. Like, does that actually make sense? Like, at the end of the day, I suppose you can do whatever you want. But yeah, kind of interested in this. People sending voice messages instead of texting is annoying. Yeah, I don't even know if this is an unpopular opinion, is it? I already agree with this. Instead of just being able to read your message, I have to find a quiet, private place for me to listen to the message. It's annoying. I understand being too lazy to type, but instead use speech to text so you can 
can still speak, but I can read it like a normal message. Yeah, 100%. I definitely agree with this. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not somebody that wants to feel like they need to be on their phone all the time. And with the voice messages, because you don't know what they say, you can sort of find yourself feeling obligated to open them like immediately. But if it was a message, you could just read it. Like they're not the worst thing ever. But I understand what this person's saying. Middle-aged guys don't buy sports cars because they're having a midlife crisis. It's because they can finally afford the car they want. I hate hearing people say, oh, he bought a Corvette because he's balding and needs to feel younger. No, as someone who's never earned much money because I made the spectacular decision to do what I love rather than what was lucrative, I'm finally in a position in my late 30s where I can actually save up to buy my dream car. I get it if cars aren't important to you. I get it if you dislike the impact they have on the environment. I get it if you think cars are too expensive and a hassle. I get it if you see a 40-something guy in a BMW M3 and assume he's compensating for something, but realize that automotive enthusiasm is a huge part of life for a lot of people and can often be the biggest connection they have to family members or friends. As a car enthusiast, I look forward to increased electrification for a lower carbon footprint and ridiculous talk for better acceleration. I accept that my budget will have to increase for a cool exotic car and decrease for other pursuits. It's worth it to me. Just like you might enjoy collecting stamps or having a closet full of nice clothes, it's also the first thing I talk about when I call my dad, since he used to race cars and motorcycles in the 70s. We bond over cars and car news. So the next time you see a guy with graying temples and a widow's peak driving a Ferrari, understand it might be the realization of a dream from childhood and try to, you know, not crap on the dream because it's not your dream. Yeah, I definitely feel this one. I've always been a big car person. And of course, there are cars I want to own in the future. But yeah, I've definitely thought about this before. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. And also like the top comment, this is a really good point. I think it's considered a crisis when they abandon their current situation or family and make purchases not within their means, which put them in further financial strife. I think that's more of a crisis situation. A man in a panic mode because life's not going the way he envisioned it to be. But if a man finally can purchase a Toyota Supra because he's worked hard or been fortunate enough to buy one, then that's a dream come true and good on him. Yeah, 100%. My husband believes that running pizza underwater to cool it down is acceptable. Nah, okay, that's enough. Pretty much what the title says, not my opinion, but my husband's. In college, my husband and I would make oven pizzas and he'd run his slices under the water fountain to cool it down faster. He says it didn't change the taste and it was still good. Yeah, but why? This comment, your husband is a raccoon. Kick him out before he eats the cat. No, but for real, why? This doesn't make sense. Pizza, of all things, doesn't really take that long to cool down. Yeah, nah, not on board with this one. Vanilla is not plain. It is a flavor and it's a damn good one. I hate always being teased for ordering vanilla ice cream or buying a vanilla cake. No, vanilla is not plain. It is a flavor and there is such thing as plain ice cream. Nasty, by the way. If anything, chocolate is more plain than vanilla since literally everything can be chocolate. Yeah, I could not agree more. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect so many people liked vanilla. It's been brought to my attention that in some cases, vanilla actually is plain. Most of the time, however, it's just called vanilla and doesn't actually have any vanilla flavoring, which doesn't help vanilla's reputation at all. So I'm referring specifically to vanilla flavored things. The most annoying thing about the internet is that everyone assumes that you're from the US or you know everything about the US all the time. As a British guy, I shouldn't have to know everything about the US or have to introduce myself as the British guy every time I talk to somebody on the internet. I also don't want to be treated like some mystical being from lands afar just because I speak a little differently. The internet, unless you're playing a game where you can pick the server location, is a worldwide thing that isn't based in one location. It can be used by anybody. Most people on the internet aren't even from the US. And my biggest pet peeve through all of this has been when Americans say the world, but they really just mean the US. The world is all countries, not just the states. The top comment. Try being from Australia. Everyone thinks our insects are the size of buildings when they're really much bigger. But also like this comment says underneath it, in all seriousness, that all the wildlife there would try to kill me thing, talking about Australia, is an American misconception that snowboard on the internet. It's no different to me saying that I'd never visit the US because of the bears or alligators or scorpions and rattlesnakes. Yeah, it's not like when you land in Australia, you just get punched by a kangaroo or something. It's actually surprisingly civilized. But yeah, the post about everybody assuming that you're American. Yeah, I understand what they're saying. Making fun of men who lose their hair because of male pattern baldness is body shaming. Watching yourself lose all of your hair and not being able to do anything about it is an agonizing process and no one deserves to be made fun of for it. It's just as bad as any other form of body shaming and people who do it should be 
be called out. If you think making fun of people who are fat or skinny, small, big, etc. is bad, but making fun of bald people is okay, then you're a hypocrite. Yeah, 100%. But is this an unpopular opinion? I hope not. But yeah, making fun of somebody for pretty much anything is bad, let alone for something like this that they have no control over. The best part of yogurt is not the yogurt itself, but when the yogurt sits for a good deal of time and settles, leaving that wonderful liquid floating atop, drinking that liquid is much better than the actual yogurt. What? <laughs> nah, definitely not. That's definitely an unpopular opinion. Instead of writing sequels or prequels to books, I feel like more authors should write equals to their books, where the same story, same events happen, but it's told from a different perspective of a different character. Wow, that's a good idea. I've always thought the idea of equals for a novel would be incredibly interesting to read the exact same story, but from a different perspective. I imagine this would be great for the Harry Potter books, as there was so much depth shown in certain characters that it's a shame that we only got to read it from Harry's perspective. The idea of equals would also allow readers to see depth and traits in a character that they may not have seen before, just by reading the main character's perspective. But yeah, once again, that's a super good idea. Why is this unpopular? Surely it's not. Broccoli is delicious, and I don't understand people who don't like it. Okay, I'm already on board. I bloody love broccoli. I'm not American, but my country's TV channels play a lot of American shows, and these kids always complain about how utterly disgusting they find broccoli, and how they'd rather die than eat it. Or like when Homer does die when he eats it. No dessert until you eat your broccoli. Oh, fine. Ah! Well, if you get a salt and boil it, what else do you expect? Add some spices, red chili powder, olive oil, turmeric, or some sauces. And it tastes absolutely godly. Even without too much spice, it still tastes so good. And I love gorging on it. Yeah, like this comment says, I love how people dance around the idea that their parents were crappy cooks and they blame the vegetables. Yeah, that's 100% the issue. I feel like usually when people don't like something, it's because either they cooked it bad or somebody else did. I like sand in the bed. No, you don't. <laughs> this is perhaps the weirdest thing I feel comfortable in and I thought this was the right place to post it. It feels nice against my skin and I don't know why. Also, I don't mind sand in my shoes. You don't mind sand in your shoes. <laughs> oh no, come on. I knew we'd read some concerning stuff today. I like finding parts of the eggshell in my eggs. It's virtually tasteless and adds a nice surprising crunch to usually really soft eggs. I also like eating shrimp tails after eating shrimp sometimes. I don't know, maybe I'm a psychopath. Yeah, maybe. Also, if any of you guys have unpopular opinions, can you comment them down below? That'd be so fun to read. Just because you have a nice singing voice does not mean that people want to hear you sing all the time. Yeah, see, this one can't be unpopular, can it? I feel like whenever someone has a good singing voice, they're always singing. Like, yeah, you have a nice voice. It's pleasant, but that doesn't mean I want to hear you sing all the time. If I wanted to hear you sing, I'd ask. Yeah, like the top comment says, similar to the people who play their music really loud so everyone can hear it. Because because surely everyone likes their choice in music. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with this. But yeah, surely it's not an unpopular opinion, is it? I love it when people take a smelly poop at my home. Oh my god, what? It's not because I like the smell or anything. I'm not that type of weird. But when they take a dump and realize, oh god, this smells, and they have to leave the bathroom and look me in the eyes, that's power. For the rest of the time they're at my house, they're constantly anxious about the smell, and it takes any stress off me. I can do anything awkward, but it won't matter. The stench of it is lurking in the background all the time. They're my poop prisoner. What? <laughs> what do you mean? So what, you're close enough to be able to smell it? And also, do you not have any spray or something? So you're telling me that the smell just lingers there and they don't do anything about it or you don't do anything about it? And because of this, what sort of awkward stuff does that mean you can do? I'm so confused and grossed out. Pushing the face against the cake during a birthday ruins the whole party. I'm not talking about ruining the day for the birthday boy or gal or non-binary person. It ruins the party for me. I came here to eat the cake and I'm sure as hell not the only one that thought the cake looked delicious. But no, an a thought it would be funny to completely destroy the cake because of some tradition. I've legit seen people destroying the cake with the face of somebody else. And I've also seen mums or the birthday boy give pieces of what's left of the cake. What the hell? I'm not eating that. It has your boogers and your dead skin all over it. Stop wasting cakes for a stupid tradition. Let me eat cake, damn it. P.S. No. No, I'm 
not buying two cakes. Edit. For many people confused, this is a fairly popular tradition here in Mexico. And I've seen many friends choking on cream or almost getting blinded with candles. So I guess my thoughts would be unpopular here in my country, LMAO. Oh my god, what? I've seen videos of this, but I didn't know it was a tradition. Why? A dumb tradition? Yeah, nah, that's not a good thing to do. And every time you see videos of it, you're like, oh my god, why did they do that? I didn't realize it was so common. If you're a picky eater, it's your job to figure out where we eat. I can't even tell you what a struggle it was dating someone who didn't like eating pasta. Anything with cheese or seafood, all vegetables except like five, pork and soups in general, most salad dressings, most spices and so on and so forth. Like what should we eat for dinner? Sushi, spaghetti, ramen, steak, pizza? No. Like I'd get stressed spending so much time finding a place that we can both eat. Edit. My ex had absolutely no dietary restrictions. I fasted multiple times and no dietary restrictions either. So as in like they just didn't like it. Yeah, if they don't like that many different things, surely it is their responsibility to figure out where to eat. The thought of going to the beach is way better than actually being there. In my mind, the beach is a relaxing place to unwind and get some sun. But when I'm actually there, the wind and sweat and sand remind me that things aren't always what they seem. Yeah, but I feel like this changes every time, doesn't it? Like, yeah, sometimes it can be super bad, but other times it can be super nice. Like if it's super windy, don't go. But yeah, true. Sometimes it can be a huge hassle and you get all sandy and it goes in your shoes and it's all over your car and stuff. Yeah, okay, I understand. Tomato is terrible in a burger. It makes the bread soggy. It's often cut too thick and it drips everywhere. It only belongs in a burger in the form of sauce. It's a terrible choice of a burger filling. Thank you for reading. Yeah, I understand what they mean, but I feel like it's not the tomato's fault. A lot of the time, the tomatoes just aren't good. But like, if it is a good tomato, then yeah, it would be way better. Or do you hate it even if it is good tomato? Is it bad that I kind of agree with a lot of these? You're not helping your spouse with the chores. You're contributing to your own household. I'm so sick of people saying that they're helping their wife with some basic household chores when the wife also works a full-time job. Like, no, it's also your house and you contributing to the work that needs to be done is your duty and not optional. Yeah, like the top comment says, just like dad is not babysitting, he's parenting. People who drive around blasting music so loud that the entire block can hear it are doing a service to humanity. Okay. There have been dozens of times when I've been out in public feeling a bit down and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I start to hear a banger hip hop track just rattling the subs like a bloody movie to all who shamelessly crank their music up to so-called obnoxious levels while writing about the town. You are loved and appreciated. Interesting. I feel like this one entirely depends on whether you're in the mood for it. No, but also they said they were feeling down and it made them feel better. Yeah, but like that's just you though, you know? It might not make other people feel good. I break my spaghetti and you can't stop me. My girlfriend always looks at me in disgust, horror and anger, but the eating experience of half spaghetti is superb. Yeah, I'm sure it's as good as full spaghetti. Follow my reasoning if you wish. You don't get sauce splashing everywhere because they're like wild snakes getting tickled juicing everywhere. Yeah, okay, I feel like that's a you problem. <laughs> you don't even need a spoon because they can be eaten with one fork in hand or foot per preference. They don't stick together as much because they get separated at birth, hence making for at least 17.4% improved ingestion experience. They cook objectively a bit faster. Results are proven. I like going against societal norms. The returning joy of witnessing signs of existential dread in my significant other's face after muttering the shameful, proud question whether the spaghetti needed to be split. Come at me, I can take it. I'm making pasta right now. I love your confidence, but I completely disagree. <laughs> like, obviously, you can do whatever you want, but I don't think there's genuinely any benefit to breaking pasta, is there? Like, the benefits they said aren't really benefits, I don't feel like. Half of them were like user issues. Most acronyms on Reddit are out of control and unhelpful. Okay, as somebody who reads this stuff every single day, I'm with you on this one. Most subreddits have no less than 20 subspecific acronyms that are not intuitive. I have no idea what you're saying and I'm not going to read an encyclopedia to figure it out. You're just weirdly making me want alphabet soup. Yeah, oh my god, that's so true. Sometimes it makes it so confusing. And also when it's an abbreviation for something and it's not even that much shorter than what they're abbreviating, it only annoys me because I'm already bad enough at reading stuff and if it makes it extra confusing to read, then I'm having a really tough time reading it. Taking a shower every two to three days is perfectly respectable. Don't get me wrong, if you work in a not so clean environment or if you sweat a lot, etc, etc, yeah, shower daily, but for the rest of you, I think two days, max three days is more than okay to go without a shower. I found my skin and my hair feel 
healthier with my natural oils? Of course, I wash my hands and maybe even splash water on my face at night. I don't think we were meant to shower every day though. That's my two cents for today. Enjoy your evening, friends. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of stuff depend on this though. My hair would not be okay with this. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people's hair wouldn't be okay with this. I don't know. What do you guys think about this one? I know what I think. I think it's time for something wholesome. That was such a good first episode on this subreddit. And let me know down below if you enjoyed this, guys. A Japanese designer creates a pencil sharpener that turns into a frilled neck lizard when you use it. Oh, that's so cool. Wow, that's really creative. And I wonder if they just saw like pencil sharpenings and they were like, wait a second. That looks like a frilled neck lizard. That's so cute. Small dog snoozing in large places. Oh, the one in the bed. <laughs> and I bet it feels extra good to be that small and sleeping on a big bed. Oh, beautiful little puppies. All we did today was smell the flowers and watch the clouds. I'm glad we didn't waste any time. Wow, well, yeah, that's so true, isn't it? Gotta make time to relax. And that's by Jang and Fox or Jan G and Fox. And once again, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more unpopular opinions, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Logita. Listening to this during a forest walk. I'm glad that nobody can see my horrified faces. Wow, that's so awesome. I never even thought about doing something like that. So you're out walking and listening to my videos. That's so awesome. And thank you for the support. And yeah, guys, thank you all for the support. Everything is going so good right now. And I'm so happy and so grateful. And as always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!